There's a lot of different ways you can create PS1 style graphics for your game. And today I will show you my process that I've used in all my previous videos. And before you say, no, I don't use everything that the PS1 did. I do no texture warping. I don't do vertex lighting. I just think it's a lot harder to get those things going when I just kind of want to emulate the ambience and the atmosphere. So I'll show you kind of how I do that. But if you're interested in the other things, I will recommend some channels. So for pure Blender, PS1 style stuff, um, Sickly Wizard's probably the best. If you want programming in Unreal, Unreal is the engine I use. Marsis has some of the best programming videos in terms of PS1 graphics. And if you want just general knowledge and texture art, Starcraft has wonderful videos. So let's get into my process. Obviously, you want to start out with a low poly model of some sort. And I usually do this uh, by using references and modeling from that. This is a character that I'm designing for my current game that I'm working on, Steam link in the description. But pretty much you want to kind of lower the poly count as much as you can, but still keep it more or less realistic. When it comes to texturing, I have two different methodologies. Either I unwrap everything and then export it and then I kind of edit it in Photopea or I kind of get the images first, then I import them and then I unwrap. But for this instance, we're gonna unwrap first and then we're gonna export that to Photopea. When it comes to the size of my textures, I try to go for 256 as it's kind of like my optimal size, uh, but that could create issues of sort of lack of detail. So if you want higher details on things like the face, you can always just export the UVs of the face as a separate map and create a separate material. In Photopea, I like to create my first raw texture, which is usually just photo bashing some free pictures, some things I found online, maybe pictures of people that I know. I do this a lot for faces. So for example, for this one, I'm using a picture of my girlfriend's face and then I kind of try to match them with my UVs as, as close as I can. My next step is to re-import those textures back into Blender and then use the texture painting to kind of fix them up. I like to draw small details here, blend some of the edges and then paint on shadows. If you're really good at painting shadows and sort of folds in the clothes, that can really sell that PS1 look. Afterwards, I kind of retrofy my textures using this website called Pixelit. It's a great tool which lets you basically pixelize images but keep the same size of your image, right? So I usually import all my textures there and then I pixelize it a little bit. Now you can also do different color palettes if you wanna get a really unique look, but I just tend to keep my original colors, just add a little bit of pixelization. The next step would be to take all that you've made and put it into a game engine. I am using Unreal Engine, so this will kind of be a tutorial for that. There is a great Unity tutorial by a YouTuber called Hacktick, so if you're in Unity, go check him out. But if we go with my process, here's how I do it. Once you import your texture, we're gonna click Sprite Actions and apply Paper 2D Texture Settings. This will essentially make the filtering from linear to uh, more of a blocky filtering. So you're gonna, if you want that N64 look, you wanna not do this. If you want the crunchy PS1 look, you definitely wanna do this. To create the PS1 style material, you're just gonna create a new material and search for fully rough. We're gonna check that. If you wanna use parameters instead, you can create two scalar parameters, specular and roughness, and connect them to specular and roughness. Set them both to zero. Then with our texture node, I'm gonna connect RGB to base color. The reason I do this is because we're gonna keep the texture as default lit. PS1 textures didn't really have sort of lights on them. Everything had to be painted in. But if you want, let's say you have a torch, right? And it emits an orange light. If you want that to show up on your texture, you wanna keep it as default lit. And then we're gonna create the unlit look a little bit later on. So the next step is to take the RGB node again and create a multiply node and then a scalar parameter called brightness. And then connect the end of that to emissive color. This will create that sort of unlit look, but with the brightness parameter, we can control how bright the emission of our texture is. So if you wanna keep it fairly dark, you obviously use a very low number between zero to one. If you wanna keep it one, it's gonna be fairly bright. It's up to you. And then lastly, if you want that wobbling effect of the polygons, we can use this PS1 function 
I found this function online, so if you want to read about it and copy it from there, I will link it below. But we're going to take the camera position divided by our wobble amount and then multiply it again by the wobble amount and subtract the camera position again. So if you want a lot of wobbliness, uh, you want to get a higher amount of wobbles. If you want to keep it sort of barely noticeable, you lower it down, right? So I like to keep it at 0.8. I think it's a good value. You can choose whatever you want. And that's pretty much it. Those are my steps for creating these graphics. Now there's other things such as lither shaders and pixelization that I can kind of go over if you want in another video, but this is kind of the base that I always do for my textures. Uh, one last thing, if you do create this material, you can create a material instance and then just change the textures so you don't have to redo the material every time. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. Maybe my sort of way of doing it is a little easier and a little more practical. But other than that, thank you for watching and please subscribe.